them. Well, hello everybody. Welcome to the show. I am Frankie B. And I'm Mark. Okay, uh, a couple quick announcements. I want to thank everybody for celebrating with us 24 years. This is going to be our last live show uh, until next year for springtime where we're going to come back and uh, celebrate 25 years. So to all the fans, thank you for hanging in there and for watching us. Um, now what's going to happen is uh, there's going to be a bunch of repeats, but there will be specials. Uh, especially for the Academy Awards and the Golden Globes, okay? Uh, so there's going to be specials in between the repeats until we come back next spring. But we have that radio show that's going full blast, okay? Uh, I already did full t uh, TV preview uh, part one. We're going to continue this uh, with that, with the shows of uh, Gotham and all that. And then uh, there's going to be a part two that's going to be um, uh, loaded up uh, this weekend. And, of course, don't forget, you can watch all the old shows, um, of Video Line Express on YouTube, okay? Uh, just uh, go to YouTube, just type in Video Line Express, it, it pops up. You also have the links. All these links, uh, especially our black page, which has the widget for the radio show, um, just go to uh, Google and type in Video Line Express, and you will see the website that has all the links, all the main links and, uh, on the homepage. And um, the other link, uh, well, you, on Google, you see VideoLineExpress.com, and you see a Video Line Express block spot. That is my blogger page, okay? And uh, that has the, the, the widget where you can actually listen to the radio show straight from that page, okay? And yes, I'm, uh, I'm going to get into creature features, like I promised, and uh, there's going to be a big, massive uh, two-part or three-part on Godzilla. Okay, because also that has a lot to do with Ray Harry Hughes, uh, Roger Corman, Lord Kaufman, Uncle Lloyd, and uh, so I'm going to be doing all those specials, okay? Uh, and the main reason is because I'm going to be on a plane soon. So I'll be taking a break, but the radio shows will still continue. And we're going to work on, on another special where you'll uh, see me and uh, Mark one of those picture in pictures. Well, we'll figure that out. But like I said, the radio shows will keep you posted on a, uh, on a weekly basis. And anything that goes on on a daily, blaze, uh, daily basis will be on my black site. Okay. Now, a couple of things. I know Mark over here went to the convention, but something happened yesterday. And I thought it was really weird. Well, uh, if you see on my blog page, I put up highlights of different articles uh, of what's happening with Marvel. Uh, Robert Downey Jr. might be uh, uh, getting uh, getting paid again for uh, Iron Man Four. Uh, they lost uh, the main announcement about the Lost in Space, uh, um, uh, which I'm a big fan of, uh, 1965 series. They're going to redo that again uh, for the TV show uh, for cable or something like that. They're going to redo the show uh, Ghostbusters, all females. Okay, yes. they're listening to uh, Melissa oh, yeah. McCarthy. So I put all those articles uh, and. Uh, a lot of them are from a, La a Latino Review, ComingSoon.net, uh, Cinema Blend. So I kind of promote all these uh, sites. But everybody always listens to the Bible, and that is BoxOfficeMojo.com. I've, I've been saying that uh, site for a long time. And Friday, what happened? They kind of disappeared off the map. And if you click on it, all of a sudden it became IMDb. So if you click on Box Office Mojo, it takes you to Internet Movie Database, the second Bible that everybody uses. And uh, all the professionals, because we're movie fans, uh, the professionals who make a living out of this are really screwed up because they got a lot of the information uh, and they get paid for it. And unfortunately, um, they're all in turmoil. I put all those links on my blog page uh, today. New York Times reported it, uh, Hollywood Reporter. I think Variety Magazine, and they're all confused. And IMDb is not, uh, because apparently they took over, they're not talking about it. So that was very interesting what happened yesterday. And the funny thing is, excuse me, if you go to IMDb, it gives you a top 10. And then in the bottom, it says, for more information about the top 10 and all that, click here. And it takes you to Twitter, out of all things. And now it looks like they got some kind of uh, box office mojo page on Twitter. I think it looks messy. It looks horrible. But uh, the other screwed up thing um, that Mark wants to talk about with you guys is Comic-Con. How was Comic-Con? Well, what can I say about Comic-Con? Every <laughs> year it seems to be getting <laughs> as though it's more of a venue for them to sell their product. You know, the consumer is left holding the bag, like they say. 
Now, they, they had this thing where a three-day pass was $65, which included Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, not including Thursday, because this thing is now four days instead of the original three days. And for four days, it's $95, which includes Sunday, which is the least visited day, which mm -hmm. by Sunday, everything's done, everyone's gone. Right. The, the people who go there for the venues basically went there for Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, because everybody who goes there, the venue, vendors, they're paying to be there to sell their products. There's a, a whole bunch of venue, uh, vendors. They're there to promote their product. Uh, the, the Hollywood establishment is there to promote the venue. And then on top of that, they want to charge the consumer to call, go in. And like you were saying, it's for they can pay extra money to William Shatner. You were telling me like $10,000 to William Shatner, $10,000 to... Uh, Patrick Stewart. Uh, Patrick Stewart. But they were, they, were uh, they were highlighting both captains, um, you know, from Star Trek. That was one of the big features, I think, for Saturday night or something like that. Yeah, and, and, uh, and the 30-year anniversary of the Karate Kid. Uh, and then they had George Clooney show up promoting his Disney movie. That's not yep. going to come out to next May. Yep. You see, these people go there to promote there. They just figured it out that these this is the target audience that they're trying to promote the money. You know, what was it? The under-18 crowd with... Uh, what do you call it, uh, capital that it's not tied into anything, and also it, it goes all the way up to 30. So right. they, that's their target audience. If anything, you should be giving them free passage, and you should be uh, uh, showering them with gifts, but they're just using people, making them go, go there to buy stuff that you can sometimes even go to a, a comic book shop, or you could sit home and watch some of these interviews on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, th w w one of the gimmicks I know, um, they... they, they um uh, the guys at the stands are selling all the merchandise and stuff like that. And uh, I was told mm -hmm. they, they charge high prices Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. By Sunday, they want to get rid of this stuff. Yes. And you can get a, like a, a third of a price. Something, so let's say an, an antique Obi Wan Kenobi uh, dollar, something like that, was about $100, $200 on Thursday. And they try to get rid of the merchandise because they don't want to carry it to the next convention. Yes. And they're selling um, for may maybe $50. Once upon a time, about 15 years ago, uh, before co these uh, conventions, coming book yep. conventions, San Diego, uh, they used to have a, a convention in New York City, actually Long Island, Long Island City, um, it was called Icon. And by then, they needed people to co show up. Uh, um, talk about lost of space, Bill Mummy, um, he's famous uh, for the kid who uh, wishes everybody in the cornfield. He played Danger, Danger Will Robinson, the little kid, and I interviewed him. At that particular time, they were only, only well, they were getting paid maybe $1,000. And they're only charging ten dollars at, at the uh, at the door, but uh, I was like free press at the time, and they uh, they were looking for people to advertise Icon, yeah. and then and, and that's and why I got in there for free to interview Comic Con and Wizard. At one point, used to want the press to come there to promote it, and now as soon as they they they're hitting the big time, the big numbers. Oh no, no, we can't give you passes. And Wizard, I think, is now not even happening anymore, right? Yeah, they, they, they're out of. Well, they're actually, out of they, they got folded into something else. You know, but you know, the, there's always a bigger fish, and yeah. that's what's happened. Yeah, because Wizard started doing the same thing Comic Con was doing. Wizard used to let you in, and then all of a sudden they started getting greedy. They started cutting back on the passes. Mm, they yeah. started charging more for the tickets. The vendors in there was were somewhat, eh, you know, sketchy. Uh, they really were losing, cutting back on the panels because they didn't want to spend money on panels. Then people started going in there and says, what is this? It's a comic book shop. Right. And people just stopped coming so often and they just, like you said, they folded. They used to be uh, in the Javits Center, then they moved over to, they started off in, in like uh, the Pennsylvania Hotel, right. or one of those things. Then they moved to the Javits Center. Then they started shrinking. Then they moved to another convention center in Pier. I don't know, Pier 41 or 51. Something like that, yeah. Something like that. And then from there, they went back to the Pennsylvania. Yeah. And then, mm. I, I don't know, then they disappeared and folded into something else. Yeah. Which uh, is what happens mm. when they get too damn greedy. Well, yeah. Uh, it's, I mean, it's been going for a couple of years, but right now what's been happening is it's become so... Uh, once Hollywood gets stuck the nose in there, yeah. it, it become uh, uh, really... Commercialized? Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, not only commercial, but very corporate thinking. Oh, hell yeah. yeah it's you know? about the, the, the Benjamins, like they say. Yeah, yeah. So, you know... And even these... These crybabies, they're, they're saying, oh, not, not the, uh, the consumer who wants to. They'll go anywhere. They'll go anywhere for these comic conventions. But the thing is, you, you were saying that the actors were whining about going to San Diego. 
Yes. Uh, what happened, they're actually going to move San Diego to uh, the San Diego Comic Con Convention, whatever they call it. They're going to move uh, right back to L.A. to make it easy for, for the celebrities. Yeah, like people like Keanu Reeves or something like that. Now, you, you, uh, you, uh, you met a couple of celebrities, though. Yeah, I, I happened to be walking by, and I met two celebrities. Well, uh, like two celebrities in New York City. Who knows? Maybe they were for Comic Con because they wanted to promote their stuff. But I met one of these guys. I'm not sure if he's a celebrity, but he's not one of the two celebrities I was talking about. I bumped into the guy, one of these guys from Comic Book Men. I, s I forgot his name. I went into, hey, you're the guy from the, the TV show. And he shook my hand half-heartedly and said, yeah, I'm the guy from the TV show. At least he shook walking. your hand. At least, at least he acknowledged you, you know. Yeah, Some of these guys cool. don't, want, uh, don't want to be bothered like the other two guys you mentioned. Yeah. Oh, oh the second person uh, I bumped into was uh, San Serif from Juno. I think that's his name. I'm not too sure. Yeah, well, okay. no, the guy from Juno. Okay. So okay. He, he, was, he was on the train. He was, he w it was today. We wanted to get out of the train. And he said, excuse me, to my, to my buddy. I didn't hear him. And he just had to push past me to get out of the train. And then the second guy, I, as I was going up the block from 57th Street and 5th, I saw Keanu Reeves smoking a cigarette. Okay. And I, and I, and I saw him. I instantly uh, saw that was Keanu Reeves. I tried to say, give him a hi. But, you know, he was he was ignoring everybody, had his head down. And if you don't want to be recognized, why are you doing it on the street corner with a cigarette? You I know? don't know. Probably researching a role of a guy smoking a cigarette outside of a hotel. But it, uh, that movie, uh, uh, was it John Wick or something like that? Yeah, John Wick. That, that, that's getting a lot of good reviews. A lot oh, of people yeah, don't know. So, so Keanu Reeves is going back to becoming uh, a movie star and not a movie actor. Uh, exactly. But, um, you know, he's a movie star. Well, uh, don't forget, he, he's also what, um, a kung fu karate master. Oh, yeah. As a matter of fact, he did a... Uh, he directed I would mess a, with him. He directed a movie, uh, I forgot. Yeah, man what of Kung Fu. I mean, no, Man of Tai Chi. Thank you. He was yeah. great. He was Th that great. That, he that was, was good. He was incredible. He was incredible in that. I wouldn't mess with him. Yeah. So that's why he can get away with smoking a cigarette and, and, and yeah. the New York street corner. Yeah, <laughs> he, probably, he probably knows the real Kung Fu, the real Tai Chi, unlike the rest of us who paid for our martial arts lesson. And, you know, we probably didn't learn the real stuff. Yeah. I mean, we, we all, you know, especially. you Keanu Reeves, hell no. You're getting the real stuff. These guys. They're gonna get the the, the, yeah. the garbage in the box bins. Yeah, like in Comic Con. Pr pr pretty much. Okay. <laughs> um, what's the other thing? One movie review. Um, Gone Girl. Now, uh, if somebody tells me the butler did it, uh, Colombo. <laughs> um, uh, and the reason I'm saying this, okay, like is Columbo a, a, a Columbo episode. A Columbo episode. It was a, um, a detective TV show back in the 70s with Peter Falk, and um, who got a, an Oscar nom a nomination for Murder Incorporated back in the 50s. Mm -hmm. But anyway, he did um, a private detective, Detective Columbo. He always had smoke a cigar, rumpled um, a coat, trash coat. Trash coat, thank you. And at the beginning of uh, the, the TV show ran, ran for 90 minutes. And super super guest star villain, you know who the guy is. Yeah, you, you see know who committed the murder. Yeah, he does, he commits the murder, you see who it is, and you see how he commits the murder. Columbus doesn't show about uh, uh, like 30 minutes into the show. And he goes, you know, by the way, uh, this guy drowned in a, uh, in a swimming pool, but uh, it's funny, he, he didn't know how to swim. Well, Columbus, I don't know, maybe he decided uh, it was hot day, he just, uh, you know, he just, uh, stuck his foot in there, he didn't, and he went. You know, it's a funny thing though, but uh, he was paranoid about what. And anyway, it, so it was a chase. You see, Columbo, how he's gonna nail this guy, okay? Now, I didn't mind that. So, if, if somebody <laughs> tells me the butler did it fine, now remember the sixth sense, right? I see dead people. Mm -hmm. Now, once you find that out, then you see the movie. It's like, oh, this guy's been dead all this time. So, if you got a friend who tells you, oh, I, I saw Gone Girl, tell them the, uh, you want to be a good buddy? To shut the hell up. Because in this case, I did find out the twist at the end, and it kind of ruined the movie for me. I could enjoy the movie a little wow. bit better. Yeah, in this That's case, terrible. it does. I can find out the butler did it. I said, okay, let's see how this uh, plays out. It kind of took the, uh, the thrill out of me, okay? Uh, that's what I got for being nosy. Tell me, everyone ain't going to bother me. This one bothered me. So if you got a friend, don't tell wow. it because I thought it was a good twist, but you do, you do kind of see it coming. Mm. That's all I can say. I'm not going to tell you the story whatsoever. Uh, they accusing Ben Affleck of murdering his, his wife. All I'm going to say is Ben Affleck is really good in his film. The cast is good. Uh, Neil Patrick Harris plays it straight, meaning, he, you know, you know, he's usually um, not straight, straight, but I'm saying as far as his acting, he plays a very serious role. And they say, maybe this guy's a killer or something. And then, of course, Tyler Perry, who uh, kind of defends um, uh, 
he does a really great supporting role. You know, you always are used to seeing him, um, Madea. All I can say is, four to five, this is going to get uh, um, David Fincher and the writers uh, 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 a lot of nominations. Now that I've seen the movie, I can actually say, this is going to be nominated for Best Picture of the Year. Is that good? I would enjoy it a little bit more if I didn't, if, um, I didn't know the twist. But uh, now, the thing is, um, a lot of these movies are not doing good. There was a big article that summer, September was like one of the worst box office years. Well, it was really bad for the past six years. I had the lowest numbers because a lot of people are not going to the movie theater. Right. Yeah, because the experience, I'm sorry to say, I remember once, like I mentioned this a while back. A million times. <laughs> a million times. The Kevin Smith alone, the Kevin Smith uh, after this incident that happened in the movie theater for Batman, he said, I don't feel safe in the movie theater <coughs> anymore. Hell, we've lived in New York. I don't think we've ever s felt safe in a movie theater. Because anything could happen in a, a New York theater happens in a New York theater. Babies crying, arguments, fights. Uh, now the, the cell t phone technology, texting, bright light. Any annoyance to get you your mindset out of the movie will happen, boom, like a like a bucket of cold water in your face. And then, uh, um, um, and so to injury, you spend uh, uh, fifteen oh. to twenty dollars on three yeah. D IMAX, and the picture sucks. Yeah, and the <laughs> yeah, and the worst thing, like if you're having an awful movie experience and someone's harassing you and, and all this nonsense, nobody will go in that theater to help you out. Nobody will tell the guy who's making a lot of noise of fighting with his girlfriend to shut the hell up. You know, nobody wants to take it. No, nobody wants to take a chance. Or you get no, shot. No, you get shot. Yeah. yeah well, I'm sorry to say that, but you know, the experience in movie theater is really garbage. That's why mm -hmm. the theater experience is going to die. Netflix is one of the people who are who are like nailing the the, the nail in the coffin. By uh, I heard they're going to do a sequel to Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Yeah. And they're going to do four Adam Sandler films. Even Adam Sandler, that's a bad box office. Eddie, even Adam Sandler is jumping bold. And it's, I mean, the next four movies yeah. is going to be on Netflix. Yes. It, and, it, and it's not too long before the independents like Quentin Tarantino are, are going to be in there. And once Quentin Tarantino takes the nosedive into that, or Rodriguez takes a nosedive, and they start going in, like, to say, in bed with Netflix everybody's going to follow them because they're gonna like, oh, those are the innovators and we got to follow whatever Quentin Tarantino or, or Rodriguez do. And then everybody's going to be jumping ship like Spielberg. I think no one's really giving him a chance anymore. George Lucas, you know, so these are the guys who probably pass their prime. Nobody's going to see them for a big box office. So if anything, they need the money, especially Spielberg, and they're going to probably jump in bed with Netflix. Well, the, uh, uh, Spielberg was a uh, uh, um, uh, Band of Brothers, the Apollo's uh, Apollo 13 series about mm -hmm. the whole Apollo NASA program. He produced that with Tom Hanks and a bunch of people. Yeah, and HBO, right? Uh, right. And so it lo looks like he's going to go back into it. Mainly because we're going to go right now into about TV shows. Mm -hmm. And they got a new thing now where... Um, like I, I forgot to mention about the blacklist. I was I was I played an extra. Uh, I'm gonna do a pretty radio good. show. You did pretty good. Uh, to say. Yeah, if you don't blink, you'll <laughs> see me. Okay, don't blink. Excellent. That was a, that was thank you. That, that was a show that uh, uh, he met the the famous Berlin, his arch enemy, and Coney Allen. But anyway, I'll be talking about that on the radio show. But uh, but the funny thing is, even James Spader, who's playing Ultron, yes, I hanged out with Ultron. That's going to be the title of the show. The day I was ha I was hanging out with Ultron, and he was like five feet away from me. But I uh, a name drop. Uh, yeah. Um, but the funny thing is, uh, even he was on James Spader was on like an, uh, the Today Show a couple weeks ago, and even he says that the people don't watch a Monday night. What they do, they watch afterwards. Wow. Uh, they got a new thing called Live Plus TV, and what that is now is a new rating system. Remember the old days? They talk always talk about the Nielsen rating yeah, system. They're dead. They're they wiped they're out. Gonna, they're going to be gone because they they're still so antiquated. They still send you forms to fill out. I remember once I got one of those. They wanted me to fill out a few pages, and they they gave they sent some, like pl uh, plastic ten dollars right there, and said fill these out. I took the ten dollars and I filled it out because there's so much paperwork. Yeah, I mean it's an old uh, rating system that doesn't even antiquated, uh, uh, man. Yeah, so what's going to happen now? Now they got uh, new sources for rating systems, and yeah, what, what they do is hello Twitter. You got Twitter. You got uh, Instagram. You got. All these social networks, every time a name pops up of a show, it could start hitting a list. So now they get this new thing called Live, T uh, Live Plus TV, and what that is, it records the rating systems. So, like, for example, Blacklist, uh, How to Get Away with Murder, uh, The Arrow, and The Flash are four examples. Uh, they got their hits when they premiered, right? 
but they're being recorded, TiVo, a, a bunch of old systems, you know, that, and people are seeing them afterwards. Now they're recording those ratings. And I wrote on the Flash got about a good couple million at the premieres. And then as of yesterday, I got posted by DarkHorizon.com. They said the Flash and the Arrow, as far as being saved on the TiVo and being watched later, mm -hmm. they got another couple of million. Nice. So instead of have three million per, or four million premiere, they're actually getting like five, six million. Wow, that's so technology so for they're you. Now they're getting the ratings <laughs> after after the fact. So these technology. these shows are huge, and you and uh, and I said it before on the radio show. How are you gonna put Big Bang Theory and Gotham at the same time? Because they they both share the same audience. Guess what? So they uh, Big Bang Theory. Everybody tune in at eight o'clock. They got about 15 million, but people recorded Gotham, and they saw it later on, and they got they a couple of million uh, uh, people watching it. So now the techno wow. technology, you can watch one show, yeah. and then it doesn't affect the show. The, the other, the other, the old days, I so said, you watch one show, you don't watch the other one, the other one will get canceled. Now that doesn't happen. All these shows are taking off. Now nice. my, he's going to review a bunch of shows right now. My point is, and I'll shut up, is that what's happening? Why? Uh, People binge. People had your chance to uh, watch it at home whenever they want to. Okay, they got those options, TV options, Netflix options, any kind of options, Hulu and all that stuff. Why go on a Friday night, uh, get a babysitter, spend all that money and stuff like that, and you're afraid maybe the movie's not that good? Stay home, binge, watch whatever the hell you Stay want anytime. Home. And people are loving it, and the ratings are doing huge on all these shows. And this is the first season is actually, uh, people can actually see the results now. And a lot of the shows, were like maybe last year, some shows were getting canceled left and right. Mike. All these shows, like Selfie, the critics headed, and people love Selfie. John Chu, uh, Captain Sulu, um, Howard and Kumar, okay, yeah. and uh, the girl from uh, Karen Gillan from the, uh, from Doctor Who. Yeah. And that show is being huge in the ratings. Yeah, that's incredible. So the fans have TV fans have spoken, or movie fans have spoken, Mo yeah, or or internet fans. Yeah. Yeah, so um, let's start with Gotham. Yes. Well, I, I saw. Don't forget the TV series. So Batman mm -hmm. is going to release on Blu ray next month, November. You get, you get a little hot mobile. I still consider the Batmobile one of the best. My favorite all time car. I just have to repeat myself on that. But. My favorite would be the Tumblr. I, I prefer the old uh, 96 Batmobile. Hey, that's hey, a, that's you, a classic. You gotta use the Tumblr because that seems more authentic for the the times that we have nowadays. You need a tank to take out the army. Uh, yeah, but uh, the the Batmobile 1966, you get more push galore. What can I say? Oh. <laughs> yeah. So, like I saw already, it, uh, Gotham is up to its third episode. From first to to third. Uh, the first episode was so-so, but the build-up, it started, it started to take off. Yeah, yeah. From the the second one and and the uh, and you know, Cobblepot showing up in the third one. Uh, Penguin really owns it. Yeah. Penguin owns that show, yeah, man. Yeah. He's, <laughs> he's the man. He's the uh, you know, forget about this person who's Will Smith's wife. Uh, Jenna Pinkett Smith. Jenna I think Pinkett I think she, she's pretty good. But she's, she's so pretty it good. It seems like she's playing a Catwoman, Eartha Kitt type. Kind of, so yeah. So that's sort of like an Earth the Kid ripoff. I mean, she could have done something different, but I guess you know, well, this is what she she knows how to do. Well, uh, uh, I mean, it also depends the way the character is written and directed, yeah. and then that's the I figure yeah, that's the way they're channeling yeah, it. Every time they bring her into it, I'm like, I don't want to hear about her. Go back to the action. Let's see what the Penguin's doing, or let's see what Commissioner Gordon is doing, or. Or when is Batman coming in? <laughs> no, um, well, I, 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 it's, like a, it's like Smallville. You're waiting for the buildup of when uh, Batman's going to Don't, don't be even there. mention Smallville. I hated that <laughs> show. That was a freaking soap opera. You waited 10 oh years. Oh, my God. For, for Superman. By the time he showed up, everybody was like, we're done with this already. We waited 10 years uh, for the Justice League to show up, too? Yeah. Uh, a, 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 a trivia, believe it or not, at that time, CW11 was ready to cancel Smallville and its fifth, sixth season because the ratings were so down. Wow. But then they canceled all the other shows, and they had no shows to uh, to replace them. Right. And what what few shows they did green light, uh, they were also uh, rating busters. They, they just fell apart. They had no other choice to keep renewing Smallville, believe it or not. That's why it did its 10 years. They had no, no other show to Damn. replace it. It's a little crazy. trivia there. It lasted longer than the animated series of Justice League. Yeah, I mean, uh, the Smallville was crap. I'm sorry. This one, yeah. Gotham, they got it right. Uh, some critics don't like it. The fanboys, really? uh, yeah, the Catwoman, uh, hey, saw the murder. If they don't like it, then, then, then uh, oh yeah, yeah, it's funny. It's like the Phil Collins 
uh, movie. I mean, Phil Collins saw. You saw what happened. You could have probably done something, and you just watched. Yeah. She but probably could have. Who knows? She's a little kid. Yeah. Th I mean, it's, it's a, a different angle. But uh, right now, it's going to be uh, between, uh, uh, what's his name, uh, Commissioner Gordon and, uh, and, uh, and Penguin. I think that's a great angle. And they can do so, so oh, much. Oh, they got the this. Riddler there too. That yeah, that uh, right, Enigma, but they haven't done it again. They took a different angle with yeah, him. And but then as soon as they bring on Arkham, you could see the other characters manifest themselves, like um, Scarecrow. Yeah. And who knows? Um, uh, what, what's her name? Mm -hmm. Quinn. Uh, uh, Holly Quinn, Holly and Quinn. Then, uh, hopefully they get to the Joker. Yeah, the Joker. They're going to concentrate on Arkham big time. I think oh that's going to be God. the name of the next yeah. uh, uh, episode or episode oh, after that. Arkham. Like, like I saw the uh, Batman Arkham. The animated uh, episode, the animated movie, it was beautiful. You ever seen that animated one? The I think I talked. We talked about it last week. With the, the, the movie, right? Yeah, the animated movie. We focused on Arkham. Yeah. And they had like this, this uh, Suicide Squad, but you know they had the Suicide Squad, and uh, after that, it's like they had so many different personalities. It was like the Dirty Dozen. Yeah. It was great. I think they should continue that story. And if they do the <coughs> Arkham, I could see them. Uh, doing like the Suicide Squad using uh, ex-convicts from Arkham to to do the government's bidding if they have to go that w that route. That, well, like I said, all these shows. I mean, uh, Arrow had a great opening. I'm not an Arrow fan, but that was a pretty good uh, uh, second season opener. Wow! And Flash it did it right. It was amazing. Flash, Flash was, was fun. Amazing. A lot of action. It was great. So uh, look, like, and I said this about a couple of years ago. TV is a dead medium. It's over. You know. Yeah. Now it's it's having now the movies are, are dying out. Yes. And TV is taking over. But it's not really the it's not really TV per se. It's the expansion of media. It's yeah. the expansion of yeah. the internet into our lives as media. You know, for example, like, I didn't get to see Flash on television. I saw it on the internet. There you go. Yeah. Uh, uh, the three episodes of Gotham, I missed them on television because I had to do some other stuff, but I caught them all on the internet. The, uh, the Fox channel for the internet is really slow, but the w, WB, what is it, uh, CW? CW. The Flash, their internet was a lot quicker. Their, their content pushed it through, but, but Fox, they had some, some work to catch up on their, their slow internet buffering. Yeah. Fix that. Yeah. <laughs> or you can be headed down the trail of, of not being seen anymore. Uh, real quick, uh, uh, Simpsons, uh, they did the, the, the um, Simpsons Family Guy, whatever. They're going to have Simpsons with Futurama. I'm going to look forward to it. And they oh, made an announcement. Wonderful. And they always made an announcement. Simpsons is going to get a movie sequel. Wonderful. And then Star Wars Rebels is a big hit. Uh, nice. Looking forward to that. And let's not forget uh, Doctor Who, of course. Um, you know, th th that, that show is really taking over. I love the last episode when they're on the moon, and all of a sudden they got all these little spider creatures. Uh, really great writing and great imagination. So t TV is really taking over. Okay, we're, we're going to head out. I'm going to be covering more of this on, on the radio show. I already started talking about these shows on the radio show. It's playing right now on my yes. widget, on my black site. Okay, to get to all that. Uh, www.videolineexpress.com on Google. Don't use Yahoo. So it's, that's throwing you all, all, all over the place. Google will take you to the website and to my blogger page. Okay, the website has all the links on all the projects we're doing. Blogger page is at a daily diary. It's kind of like, yeah, daily diary. Mm -hmm. And I keep posting everything. As a matter of fact, I posted today. Today is our last show. Mm -hmm. And then, but the radio uh, shows are going to continue. Yeah. There's a widget. You can listen to the show there. Until, um, until Alibaba buys up everything in, in New York. They're coming in. Uh, they're going to be coming in as a typhoon, and they're going to buy up Amazon and everything. So I think we're signing off. Okay, we out of here, folks. We we'll see you next out. year. Listen to the radio shows. Take care. See you next year. <laughs>